All right, welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide Part 4. Today it is Weeping Peninsula. If this is the first time you're using any of these guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. And if you have any tips of your own, put them in the pinned comment in the comments. Uh, like, reply to the pinned comment in the comments, and uh, that way we can just kind of build up a surplus of tips. But otherwise, this is Arena. So Arena's quest takes place over pretty much the whole game. Um, she's sort of tied to an ending, but not really. Um, you continue her quest in Castle Morn, a little bit further to the south. And for doing her quest, you're rewarded with a pre-upgraded weapon, which is kind of nice, as well as an Ash of War attached to it. Um, you get a casting seal, uh, you get some cool lore, it's just a fun quest. Um, yeah, overall, worth doing. It's really easy, so just follow along with the guide and you'll get it done. Yeah, so we're just picking up the items that are floating around here. There's a Morning Star. There's some golden runes, so a smith and stone too. So you know it's, it's worthwhile, it's worthwhile picking up. Now here is a, oh, there's a bunch of dogs here that are pain in the fucking arse. But otherwise, here's a fuck, here's a scarab that we're gonna use the bow to. Oh my god, wow, this is this would have this would have bugged me at the time, and it's bugging me now. But uh, aye, we're just gonna <laughs> use the bow on the the back of torrent to just take care of that. Now we got mighty shot, which is would be cool if we didn't already have it on the weapon we're using, so it's kind of an irrelevant Ash of War, despite that it's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't even change the, um, like, the infusion on a bow. It just stays standard, see? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really pointless even putting it on. Aye, aye. So, we're putting Sacred, Sacred Blade on our weapon because we are going to fight a uh, Black Knight. But the problem is, is that, again, we still don't have the really, really great method for killing those things. Um, and we don't get that until a bit later. Please ignore the fucking steam overlay. God, this is so annoying. Um, I promise you I'll turn that off eventually. But right, we're just going to run down here and get the map fragment first and foremost. Because um, I think it's just worthwhile getting the map before anything else, to be honest. Just take care when you're grabbing the map fragment, because there is a giant golem, like the one we fought in High Road Cave in an earlier part, um, except this one has a big-ass bow and arrow, and it is shooting exploding arrows at you. So just be a bit careful when you're picking it up. So it looks like now we're just going to run back to Round Table Hold and upgrade our weapon. It would appear that we have just enough Smith and Stone 2s to upgrade the Katana, so that's uh, definitely worth it. And we could probably, yep, upgrade the imps to plus one. Might as well. It's uh, free damage and health for the imps. So now we're just back here next to the um, the merchant. And now we're going to put it to night time. And then that will let us... Uh, that will uh, spawn, spawn the Black Knight, I guess. Yeah, this one's a little different from the one we fought in an earlier part. This one has the flail. Um... I personally find them a little more tricky. Um, they have these big, yeah, those, the leaping sweep attacks, and that seems to hit me a lot more often with the flail one than the halberd. Overall, not difficult, just irritating to fight because it moves a lot. Yep, and just to reiterate, the storm stomp um, technique that works on the other horse-backed enemies does not work on these guys. So the general gist for fighting these things is just... Keep your block up, uh, like, the, uh, apparently sometimes it just hits past your block. Great one, thanks. But yeah, generally blocking its attacks and then hitting after the block. So it's not necessarily a counter-attack, it's just, um, you know, block and attack. Uh, being aggressive tends to be um, not particularly effective against these things in my experience because it doesn't stagger via your attacks, but it will just hit, hit you straight through yours. So I love that. Um, they just you move about you so to, fucking much. You almost have to fight it like it's a... Uh, almost like it's a Dark Souls boss, more so than an Elden Ring one. You can't yeah. respond with aggression so much with this. You've got to sort of play it slow, especially in the early game. Yeah, look for your look for your um, moments of opportunity. As you can see, this guy is just being an absolute fucking cunt. You can't, like... You can bleed them, but you can't get hits in consistently enough to do so unless they've fallen off the horse. Um, Sacred Blade is kind of cool because you can get in the odd ranged hit, but trust me, once you get, uh, what is it, Lightning Strike? Or... Thunderbolt. Is that what it's called? 
Once you get Thunderbolt, these things become significantly more manageable. Um, just nice so yeah, just Thunderbolt. Nice thing about Thunderbolt as well is you can uh, you can pretty much slap it on anything. It can go on your great stars later. It can go on the katana. It can go on a curved sword, straight sword. Doesn't matter. You can slot right. it on basically everything. So if you take anything away from this, it is Thunderbolt is the way to go because you can just keep your block up and then just spam Thunderbolt because it you know because it runs away all the time. So Thunderbolt will just track it in like a big radius around you basically. So we're coming here, grabbing this golden seed, and also um, if it's still night time the death right bird should show up. So apparently it's gonna. We're gonna put on the uh, scorpion charm. And we've already got sacred blade equipped, which allows us to just um, go to town on this fucking thing and uh, get it killed nice and quick. Obviously, when you're fighting these things without sacred blade, they are considerably harder. Uh, but when you're, you know, six shotting them with a big ranged swipe, it makes things a hell of a lot easier. Now, these bats are obviously... Um, a bit of a spanner in the works, so watch out for them. Um, it's possible you'll be able to get enough hits into the, the bird before the bats even show up, though, so that, that'd be nice if that happens for you as well. But yeah, the bats are an absolute pain in the fucking arse. Little general tip for the death birds, actually. Um, when you're fighting them, if you don't use Sacred Blade for whatever reason, don't know why you wouldn't, but if you're not using Sacred Blade, try your best to sort of stay in their crotch because they don't seem to be able to hit you with a large majority of the, their attacks while you're under there. So it's sort of the safe haven for you, and it lets you do the classic strategy of bury your face in its ass and swing until it dies. Yeah. Now, what you saw there is we were leveling up, and at this point, uh, we have, we're have we going to be leveling our mind to 17. That is the next stage in our uh, leveling process. So we should have... Um, so we should have 20 Endurance, 25 Vigor, and then we're trying to get to 17 Mind. Now, we used the um, the Spirit Spring to jump uh, way onto the top of uh, that, like, Rampart Tower there. And then when we jump back off, we're going to jump over onto this wall using it, and then we're going to drop off, and then this is just like a quick way of getting here specifically. Because um, there's like, I think it's a smithing stone, or a, it's like a low-tier smithing stone, or a bad golden rune. A smith and stone one, epic. We have about 40 of them. Great. Thanks, I'll add it to the pile. Uh, literally. So from here, we are just going to be heading back to the the grace currently, I'm sure. Oh wait, no, there's a there's a scarab right here. And again, we're going to use the, uh, the bow. Now, that scarab, so poison mist, very good by the way. Uh, it can come in handy in a number of different applications. But specifically, that scarab was like a ghostly scarab, and those ones always die in one hit, but they teleport away um, once they see you, as opposed to running away. We had encountered one earlier, actually. There was there was one in the little Kaelid detour. Um, it's standing out on a little island. I think it had poison armament in it. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so, yeah, for those, you're best off using a ranged attack. Now, if you have reasonably high strength and dexterity for whatever point in the game you're at, the Kukri throwables, that actually that merchant that we just basically ignored sells an infinite number of them. Um, the Kukri are actually very good at taking those things out. That is true. We actually do that at one point later in the guide. Mostly because you just mentioned that it's something that you could do. But yeah, the Kukri can uh, also uh, you can use them as your projectile to hit them. That way you don't need to like, sneak up on them or whatever. Now here we are at a rise. Now we... Read that little book outside the rise. What this will do will activate a puzzle. This current puzzle is to hit the three tortoises that are uh, surrounding surrounding the rise. Um, the rise is just the name for the tower. And uh, you saw the two that were directly outside. There's one on the path, one in the bushes, and then there's an invisible tortoise uh, in the, the pool. And for some fucking reason, you're supposed to know that there's a tortoise there. Um... There are little disturbances in the water. That's kind of your hint that there's something there. It's sort of paddling around. Still not a not a great hint, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> no, I mean, no, it's pretty obtuse. Um, but definitely worthwhile doing the rises in the game. Uh, most of the rises have a memory stone at the top of it, and that will give you uh, more spell slots. That's how you do that. Your spells aren't tied to a stat in this game, like they are in the others. 
uh, or rather your the, the amount of spells you can equip are not tied to a stat in this game like the others. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically the that's the gist for rises. Um, I think that's uh, fairly self-explanatory. Um, I don't think they're particularly great as a puzzle, but uh, I don't know. In yeah, some of them can even be skipped. Uh, yeah, like some can, of them can even can be just skipped. Ignore the puzzle entirely. Just fuck it. Climb over the wall. So we're just heading to the north here on this uh, this kind of shelfy upper mountainous area that we jumped up to. Right at the end here is a stone sword key. As we said, we get a surplus of them. There is literally only one point in the game where we ever buy stone sword keys. And otherwise, every stone sword key we find on the ground. And it, on it only ever comes up once that we need to buy any. And even then, we could probably just have, like, not bought any and just done things in a different order. But th they were cheap. Um, there's a, a merchant coming up that sells stone sword keys for 2,000, which is, I'm pretty sure, the cheapest they get. So it was actually worthwhile just buying them anyway, because that's very cheap comparatively for stone sword keys. But otherwise, here we are at the Impaler's Catacombs, um, and I yeah, another imp this dungeon. One is. It is an imp one, yeah. Um, I think it's a watchdog boss. Um, you've already seen one of those, except this one has imps in the room as well, which is just fucking peachy. But it's fine because we also have imps in the room, so. <laughs> that sounds that sounds vaguely threatening. Yeah, but I've got <laughs> imps is. in the room. <laughs> I have imps, this is a threat. <laughs> threat and a promise. Uh, so, as we said before, the way of dealing with imps is, well, ground slam, but that's the way of dealing with everything. But the, the, the main, main way of dealing with imps is to block their attacks and use the guard counter. Now, sadly, I didn't do that to show you as I was saying it. But I undoubtedly will be defeating imps that way. Just like undoubtedly imps will try and ambush you again. But yeah, blocking is definitely your your way for beating these fucking things. Because they are... they are Well, if the guard counter method didn't exist, these would be one of the more um, pain in the ass enemies. Uh, so just step on that, uh, on like the, the floor, and then immediately run off. And then that will raise the, the floor up. But... Um, but they yeah, pulled the that same trick a few times, actually, so um, do, if you do see do. a big open square room um, and you look up, there will be spikes in the ceiling, so just be aware that that is a thing that can happen. It won't instantly kill you, but it does do a fuckload of damage, so try and avoid it if you can. So there's the enemies that are spawning at the ground here will infinitely spawn, so kind of just run past them, don't bother fighting them. Um, that's just a bit of a folly doing that, ultimately. Uh, we also picked up a prattling pate there in that previous room, um, which again is just an item that when you use it, it makes a little sound emote. doesn't actually have any specific use other than the sound emote, but um, it's basically for multiplayer just to communicate with other players in this game's sort of unique way. And um, that's pretty much it for this dungeon. There is one that comes in handy, actually. There is a carving later in the game. Um, oh, prattling pate later in the game that you use for box quest oh yeah but yeah we'll mention we'll mention that as and when it becomes relevant so here we are there's uh so this is the air tree burial watchdog there's the imps and um i uh tried to use golden vow with no fucking mana go me nice little so, bonus for golden vow is it will also buff your spirit ashes so if you do it fast enough after summoning one then your spirit ash also gets the golden vow buff the increased damage and defense yes yes which is uh, great um so it looks like there's uh like three or four imps in this boss room actually i think yeah, it's three so but there might be one off to the side but um so thankfully, again, the uh, the Fang Dimp Ash is putting in the work for taking aggro off you, because if you were just in here yourself, you have to deal with all four of these fucking things at once. So that ain't a fun experience. And you just no. saw me there using the guard counter method to kill that imp. But now that those imps are dead, you can just start ground slamming the boss. That just tends to be the, the general go-to method for almost everything in the game. Both imps still alive, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that one died there, but the fact that they took as much heat as they did is actually kind of astounding. 
good demonstration there that charged attacks are also a great way to break an enemy's stance. So you'll see it go into a little stagger animation, its chest will glow, and then you can land a critical hit. Um, yeah. Charged attacks are, like, for all weapons across the board, your go-to method for breaking stance, unless you can put an Ash of War on that's specifically good at breaking stance. So here we are uh, back at this grace, uh, back at the... Um the merchant uh oh, and yeah and just uh, to quickly mention if you are finding it hard getting in a charge attack against that boss uh just spam ground slam that's all that's all you got to do and if you feel that you need more ground slam then you can just put in uh give yourself more blue flasks in case you feel like you're running out but um yeah we leveled our mind to 13 there so um if you're following along just get that done but now we are heading over to the east side. Uh, well, not quite yet, but um, it's a vaguely eastish weeping peninsula is where we'll be going next. I think you're going to head up to the. Uh, there's a tower with a baluster. Yeah. In it, in this area. Um, when you picked up the rainbow stones a little bit ago, just be careful in that general area. Because the Ballister can actually shoot down at you from a few locations in that lower part that we were just in. So I've never be just hit off. Take though. care. Have you not? No, no. I guess I've just been lucky then. It caught me by surprise on my first playthrough. Let me tell you, I jumped out of my fucking skin. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Guess I've been lucky. But it does. Yeah, I suppose it does make sense that it can hit you from there. So yeah, fair enough. It was like the fucking. It was like D-Day. Normandy Beach. I just got shot out of nowhere. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, what the fuck's happening? Throw maybe Pearl Harbor is a better World War Two comparison. I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel much like a battleship. So here we are. We're heading west, and what you saw there is we just picked up some raw fruit. Now, for no specific reason, but again, I just want to re reiterate multiple times that you should just be. Pretty much spam and triangle everywhere you go on the off chance that you'll just hoover up some uh, crafting items that are on the ground. Um, like we said before, crafting isn't extremely uh, relevant in the game, but it's relevant enough that you will just want those materials to hand when you got to use them. So it's free, so you might as well get into the habit of doing it. So here we are at Alien Village. There's a couple of items here. So there's a flame crest shield, some dog shit. Um, oh, we also got the Demi, I know this is a bit late mentioning this, but we got the Demi-Human Ashes from the uh, the Watchdog boss. Dog shit, don't even bother using them. Um, no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. They're not actually that bad, and if oh. you summon them at night, they have a, um, they get a damage buff. They That's act more aggressively crazy. if you summon them at night. Yeah, um, you know how Demi-Humans, like, their eyes glow red? Um, just to be clear, I want to interrupt and say we just picked up a... Um, an incantation, Flame of Frenzy, very strong, as well as a Sacred Tear, so we can upgrade the flask again. But no, yeah, the Demi-Human's eyes glow red at night, and the same applies to your Spirit Ash. But are you going to use them over the, the Fang Dimps? God, no. <laughs> but although, like we've said before, you should experiment with Ashes of War, as well as the Spirit Ashes, because those are the most fun things in the game, ultimately, to fuck about with. And then we're just using that Sacred Tear, we're upgrading our flask, because why wouldn't you? And now I think we are now heading down to the um, the like the the mining cave bit, and there's kind of like a sort of there's like a normal beaten pathway, but then there's this kind of like secret way that you get a shortcut down there, and by doing so, there's a scarab down here. There is, yeah. So this is so you might as well come this way. That way you get the scarab in the process of going to a place you were going to go anyway. Yeah, I so, think this one has the lightning strike incantation in it. I think so, I think so, yeah. So we are uh, dropping down onto the the uh, the gravestones, and we don't want to head all the way down because there's all the lightning that is striking as well as the bats, so we're going to try and get this scarab from up here by mighty shotting it. I don't, don't think it'll die in one hit. Oh, it might. Yeah. yeah. So if you use a flame, I think if you use a fire arrow specifically, that will kill it in one hit. Uh, I think if you use the other arrows, you don't. So just bear that one in mind. I know I said not to use the fire arrows, but for that one, you're allowed to use a fire arrow. Because if you don't kill it, it's going to 
fuck off and it's going to be a pain in the ass and then you're going to jump down to try and get it and then the bats are going to come after you and it's going to be a bad time for everybody involved. So, uh, we're just going to put down, we're going to lower this lift and then we're going to do the thing. We just do this every single time, uh, just get into the habit of it. Most of these caves will have, um, like, smith and stones and shit, like, in the wall on this sort of, like, ledge drop-down thing on the side. So, they almost all have it, so you might as well just get into the habit of uh, knowing that's what you should be doing. So in this tunnel, I think is the first time we're going to properly encounter the misbegotten enemies. So what is it they can drop, Tony? Yes, so... The misbegottens can drop... Fuck, where the fuck are they? So I know they can drop the iron cleaver. Um, here, we, here we go. So, um... Wielding it. They can drop the Iron Cleaver, they can drop the Misbegotten short, short Bow, the Long Haft Axe, and they can drop Old Fangs as well. Ah, um, quite a rare crafting material that, and it's useful for some of the perfume consumables, um, which are generally pretty good. So um, whenever they make a drop um, during your playthrough, probably a good idea to pick them up. The Iron Cleaver is also not a bad weapon. Long Haft Axe, not a bad weapon. Um, like we're saying, just experiment. Use what you find interesting. You don't necessarily have to stick one for one with what we're doing. We're just showing you a method, and in most cases, the method. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Now, the miners <clears throat> can drop the pickaxe. They can drop uh, explosive stones, expo explosive stone clumps. They can also drop poison, poison stones, poison stone clumps. Um... Various smith and stones, they can drop, uh, oh, okay, then there's like later ones, that there's like, for instance, the ones in Yerlo Annex Tunnel can drop gravel stones apparently, but fuck it, like, at that point, who cares, the only thing that's relevant is like, weapons and armour that things drop for the most part anyway, so, aye, these can drop the pickaxe, and that's cool, because it's a strength weapon that'll do piercing damage, and that's like, a generally a rare combination. Yeah, it's a pretty great combination as well. Um... There are enchanted miners, I think. Um, yes, and there they are. wield well, the. Partly not here. No, not in this particular cave, no. But they wield the digger's staff, which boosts, I think, exactly two sorceries. So if you want to sure. use those two sorceries for any reason, um, get your hands on a digger's staff, keep it in your offhand, cast it with a better casting tool. So the problem with Ground Slam is it's amazing until you run out of mana, in which case it becomes not particularly amazing. Picked up an so... Exalted Flesh there. That's a consumable that will boost physical damage. So if you find yourself running short on damage versus a particular boss, just munch on an Exalted Flesh, get a damage boost, and you should have no trouble. Yeah, that's true. large glintstone scraps, which are the items that we used to defeat the troll boss in part two. Oh god, it's such an easy kill with those, uh, with those consumables. Yeah. Effectively, it's, uh, just an item that will, um, it's like a, it's like a consumable item that casts a spell on use, effectively. So it's just like a one, it's a one-time use spell, is one, as I guess you could look at it. So I guess we're just running past a couple of those enemies, because fuck them. Um... Yeah, actually, that's that's something to mention. The miners that are actively chipping away at the walls, they oftentimes won't aggro immediately. They will generally aggro when you pick the item up that they are mining. So if you walked in front of them and picked up the smithing stone that they're working on, um, yeah, try not to get grabbed by the misbegotten. Um, if you pick up the item that they're working on, they will then aggro onto you, so... Deal with the enemies that are already aggroed onto you first, and then go around, pick up the items, deal with the miners one at a time, just to avoid getting swarmed. Uh, to mention that the misbegottens are these kind of like ugly looking things, but um, they pretty much, so like the, the ones that are wielding the iron cleaver, which will look like an iron cleaver, um, those are the ones that will drop it. So for instance, they, they don't have the cleaver and the bow, just the ones with the bow will drop the bow, etc. 
But yeah, the good news is, is that both the Katana and uh, Ground Slam is pretty good at taking care of them because they can be bled, yeah, etc, etc. Um, now, I do think I'd die in this area, I think. Can't quite remember. Mm, I don't know that you do. So the flying ones as well, um, it's quite good because you can use Bloody Slash on them to kind of knock them out of the air. Anything that kind of flies like a bit above your head, but not excessively, uh, Bloody Slash will do a, a do, do a good job of taking care of them. Likewise, the Gravitas Ashable will uh, knock any flying enemy out of the sky, so that applies to the bats, the misbegotten, um, the fucking birds in Stormvale and other places in the game. So I think I was just checking about to see if I'd picked up everything, but it looks like I did. So that's good. Nice and easy. From here, I think it's just onto the boss. Yeah, and uh, what is the boss? I can't remember. Scaly Misbegotten, and it drops an exceptional weapon. God, it's just a Misbegotten as a boss? Fucking hell. Oh, well, uh, no, 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 no. It's a big Misbegotten. It's, right, so I, I'll take a Leonine Misbegotten as a boss, but I'm not taking just the ones that drop the fucking... If it's just one of these fucking guys, then it doesn't, this doesn't count. This is fair. just this is just a guy. Like I could fight it, it... this guy in real life. <laughs> is this the fighting a pit bull thing again? Look, look at it. I could easily oh, look, bro. I could stab this thing to death easily. But yeah, I mean, if so... you had a katana and two imps, yeah, I have imps. This is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> So, strictly speaking, um, again, this boss is weak to ground slam, particularly weak to ground slam, actually, because it sends it flying, and uh, the imps and bleed. And that those these combination of traits will, like, pretty much melt most bosses in the game. Um, but particularly that boss there, so there's really... You should not have an issue with it. Summon the imps, hit it with your ass, and then level up mine to 14. That is the process currently. Now, we got so the big anchor weapon, and I know that you're dying to mention it, so on you go. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Yeah, no, the rusted anchor is by far the funniest weapon in the entire game. Um, it's a, I think, a great axe uh, class weapon, and it deals exclusively piercing damage, um, which means that if you stack all the piercing damage buffs and the jump attack buffs, you can do some absolutely nutty numbers with jump attacks with that weapon, so... If you're looking for something fun to do, try the Rusted Anchor out. It is great. So here we are in the demi-human forest ruins. This bit here that I jumped into, you can only access by jumping up, over, up and over the wall to get to it. Oh God, I can't remember what this item is. It's a shield. How shield the of the guilty. fuck do you remember that? But yeah, uh, Rism, not a shield Rism that we're going to use. Prison, baby, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But there is a demi-human boss coming up, and uh, as much as they're easy to begin with, there is like a, a way of making it even slightly easier, because you can sneak up behind it, and that is what we're going to do. So just take like a wide angle around this thing and not aggro anything in those runes, and then you can uh, just come come up around behind it. I mean, this one's not even a boss. Um, so for some what reason, we're already so, angry at you. <laughs> yeah, for some reason it was already angry, so we're just going to quit out and come back in to just reset his position. Which I suppose that's something you could do. You don't, you could just aggro everything and then just quit out if you really wanted to. But yeah, you can just summon the imps behind it and then just fucking go to town. Just ass slamming it. I mean, you already do pretty great damage to it. But two ass slams. And um, that's it. That's it fucking dead. And we get the Demi-Human Queen Staff and Crystal Burst. Uh, Demi-Human Queen Staff, pretty good. Um, probably your best option very early game for a casting um, casting tool for sorceries. So, um, something to keep in mind. You might also notice there, when you killed the Queen, all the Demi-Humans got scared and stopped attacking you as well. So, there is that. So, take that. I mean, it's not going to be difficult to begin with, but now you can make it so it's not even anything. So, we've got the Faith Knot Crystal Tear there, which is um, quite good because if you equip that, into your physic flask and then drink it you get how many is it five or ten extra levels n extra levels of faith how many ten 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 for three minutes that's crazy is what that is 
Yeah, I mean, it means you can cast things like Golden Vow, the incantation version, not the Ash of War. You can cast Golden Vow with only 15 faith. Which is quite cool. So yeah, you can do a lot of things with the Physic Flask um, that you really should not be able to do. So now we're heading into this tunnel, and this is easily the worst shittiest one in the game, I think. I think this is the worst one. Now, uh, yeah, there's so a, a hole in the floor you can kind of see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see that there's kind of like a cracked pattern on the floor. You just go around it otherwise. I mean, it literally doesn't matter even if you fall through the floor, but it just makes things slightly less annoying, is all that is. So, yeah, this, this entire tunnel is a, a whole floor trap, there's some rats, and then there's a fucking rune bear. And then, for the... For the courtesy of fighting a rune bear, of all things, um, you get the, uh, it's the magic defense talisman. Spelled right which talisman, is, yeah. Yeah, which is like... I mean, I guess that's like an alright thing, but it just never, it just never came up for us, really. I mean, you could get use out of it in the next area. Like, the next major area has a lot of magic damage sources in it, so it could come in handy in that area. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps you're running a certain thing that gives you a, a, a huge weakness to magic damage. So in that case, yeah, I suppose. Now, you also can't sneak into this boss um, as soon as you activate the boss. Like, <clears throat> like if you just get close enough, it's going to wake up automatically is what I'm saying. So summon the imps and be ready for this thing immediately attacking you. Now, as we've said, there is a, there is a good method for fighting these things, but you literally don't get access to that method until way later into the game. So you just have to raw dog fighting this thing. And um, you know what? There, there just isn't a technique. There just isn't, right? They hit, they hit super hard. They hit super fast. Even though they can be bled, they've got a huge bleed resistance. Um, they have high defense, they've got high health. There's literally, like, they just don't have a fucking weakness aside from the one specific thing that we discovered. Um, oh, they are weak to sleep, but you don't have any way of putting it to sleep. And as soon as it wakes up, it just starts fucking wailing on you again. So, really just hit it and hope you kill it. And that's the strategy. Just fucking hit it is the strategy here. The imps will I mean, at least one... take an amount of heat off you. Once upon a time, there was actually a way you could cheese that bear. Oh, yeah? Yeah, if you had it standing in the water that was in its arena, and you triggered its grab attack, um, you could make it fall through the floor by breaking out of the attack early. <laughs> okay. And it'd just fall into the void and die. So, we are now at the Church of Pilgrimage. Hopefully you followed along that. We went across the bridge, up the side of the cliff. And uh, we're getting another sacred tier, and there's also, I'm pretty sure, another sacred tier. So yeah, there's a, I think there's three sacred tiers in this whole area, so it's definitely worthwhile coming here. Now, uh, when you're at this grace, you can also talk to Melina. Now, there's plenty of graces in the game that have talked to Melina as an option. I think there's only one of them where you have, to, I don't think you have to do it with any of them, actually. But um, ultimately, they're pretty much optional, so they're pretty much there for lore reasons. Strictly speaking. There is one church where when you speak to her, she gives you a gesture. That I was thinking that, and that's in Altus Plateau way later, so that's the only one that's, like, mandatory, quote-unquote. But otherwise, they don't do anything in terms of, like, her quest progression or anything like that, so you don't need to worry too much. Um, if we say talk to her, that's the only time you need to talk to her. But here we are doing some drop-offs to this cliff edge. Uh, there's an item down here along with uh, some bats. So apparently there's no items in this side, but whatever. Um, God, what is the item down here? It's pure nothing as well, from what I remember. Bewitching, oh, actually, Bewitching Branch is actually uh, relevant, very relevant for one boss specifically. Um, now, that's an item that if you hit an enemy with the Bewitching Branch, it will start attack it, it'll be on your side, as if you summoned it via, like, a, an ash or something like that. But, um, there's only one, like, there's only one 
boss in the game that's that that's specifically good against. So just save your bewitching branches until that boss. And even so, by the time you get to that particular boss, like we have it other becomes, methods. It's yeah, it's reached the stage in the game where fighting everything is just dealer's choice. Like, yeah, yeah. So basically, you have the so many branches, tools just fight, just picky, picky poison. <laughs> Yeah, so essentially the Bewitching Branch is like an option that you have. So depending on what your build will be by that point in the game, it's worthwhile having them. Because you might have a build that's not good against that boss specifically. So yeah, just hold sure, on sure. to it until we tell you. Um, specifically the boss in Castle Saul, in case you just stop watching past this episode. So yeah. But otherwise, we are at another Catacombs. And we're going to equip Sacred Blade because this one has skeletons in it. And as we've said, Sacred Blade is the way to deal with skeletons. Because uh, a buffed, like, a weapon that has Sacred Blade will do the huge damage to the skeletons and kill them in one hit. It will also stop them from regenerating, so that's fun. Now, as we're dealing with skeletons, the skeletons in here, uh, pretty much all the skeletons in the catacombs will be either the skeletal swordsmen or the skeletal archers. Um, I don't think there's any other types of skeletons in these uh, catacombs. So they can either, they can drop the longbow, irrelevant to us. Remember to pick up these glove warts that we're passing. Just make sure you're paying attention to what we're picking up. Um, and then also the skeletal swordsman can either drop the scimitar, the scripture wooden shield. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, ignore the skeletal. No, 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 the skeletal swordsman can do that. And then there's the heavy skeletal swordsman and they can drop the gross messer, which is a fantastic big curved sword. Pain in the ass to farm though, because there really aren't that many skeletons that can drop it. They don't appear yeah. that frequently. This case, uh, so this um, catacomb actually does have, I think, two of them. Well, this guy just there. He's the so the ones that have the big curved sword and no shield are the ones that can drop the gross messer. So uh, we are going to show you a little technique that we have. As you can see, there is a fire trap here. But what we're going to do is equip the Margit Shackle that we got from Patches. Now, this item, for some reason, can activate traps um, in, like, a huge radius around you. So this means that you don't need to use the bow or whatever to shoot the traps to lower them. You can, in fact, just use the Margit Shackle, and that'll take care of them. There was another one with a gross messer in this room, actually. So if you were looking to farm them uh, for a gross messer, this cave would, oh, catacomb, sorry, would uh, probably be the best, the best place to do that since it's so well, early. At least game. a good option. Yeah. Now, uh, also to mention, the sacred blade um, ash will uh, stop the skeletons regenerate, which is something that they do. So if you were to hit that skeleton, for instance, it would uh, fall into a pile of bones and then it would start reassembling. And if you hit them when they're reassembling, that will stop them reassembling for good. But otherwise, they will continuously reassemble unless you um, uh, hit them. Yeah. I think I want to talk a little bit about the boss of this area. Okay, go on. So the boss in this area is a cemetery shade. Um, they're actually a surprisingly robust enemy, usually. Um, they can tank a lot of physical damage. Um, they hit exceptionally hard because they can inflict bleed on you. They can also stun you in place for a grab attack. Um, they're... Oh, we just picked up the gross mess or go us. Sick. Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're reasonably scary, um, unless you have Sacred Blade. And yes. hopefully you're about to see why they're scary <laughs> unless you have Sacred Blade. <laughs> yeah, because Sacred Blade does <laughs> that to them. Um, so they are insanely fucking weak. Now, they can dodge it, as you've just seen. But they also can not dodge it and just fucking die. So, uh, yeah, Sacred Blade is a mandatory pickup. Now, we did get Luteal the Headless Spirit Ash which is um, probably the only other spirit ash that is at least comparable somewhat to the imps. Um, it's way, way tankier than the imps, has much less damage, but is definitely one of the tankier ashes of war. Uh, sorry, spirit ashes. 
Um, so if you want to change it up for whatever reason, then Luteal the Headless certainly is an option that you go with. I think we do demo Lutel a couple of times. Maybe... I'm almost certain we do. There's there's a few Spirit Ashes at different points that we do use. Lutel, I think, was one of them, and another one is my favourite Spirit Ash in the game. I can't wait. Oh, so you can talk about this. Oh, the Erdtree Avatar. So there is a 100% guaranteed safe way to kill this thing. Um, this applies to this version and also the Rotten version. They are exceptionally weak to fire. Um, so if you do have any sources of fire damage, go you. You're going to have a much easier time. Um, but basically, you want to bury your face in its crotch, wait for it to do its ground slam, uh, because it has a variation of ground slam as well. It's using its own spells against you. Um, and you want to bury your face in its crotch, um, just dodge anytime you see it move, get an attack in when you have a window, and you will, the only attack you've really got to be careful for is this that you're seeing right now. When you see so, that, either dodge away or directly into the boss, and you will avoid it, gives you a huge window of opportunity to attack it, and eventually you'll break its stance. You can just rinse and repeat that same technique until it dies. Now, I do fuck up the process a little bit, I will admit. However, when it does the ground slam attack, it doesn't seem like... It looks like you would roll under it and then get squashed under it if you rolled into the attack. But actually, when it does that attack, it still has like a hitbox that you can't roll into. So if you roll into it, you actually end up rolling around it to behind it. And um, that's why it's such a good technique to do. Because, uh, so you get the O-Plane bubble tier and the Crimson Burst Crystal tier. Those are both very good. Um, we actually use them, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the one that gives you the bubble shield and the health regeneration. So, uh, aye, this one's really, really good. But, um, yeah, just getting round behind it means that you can just get your free hits in. And then, because it has to do the turning round animation. So, that's why it's good. Uh, and we this use that technique a lot, so. Aye. Yeah, there's a lot of Erdtree avatars. They will pop up um, quite often. There's pretty much one or two in every major area. Um, the enemy we just killed there is kind of this singing harpy banshee kind of creature and when you kill them generally speaking they'll drop a decently sized golden rune so whenever you hear that singing just search around look for the banshee and kill them once you've gotten the rune once it will not drop again so you can't farm them for golden runes but it's a nice thing to get when you can so to speak uh yeah correct uh, now dropping off the edge there we've got the eclipse heater shield which it's just, again, very annoying that the best shield for the... Like, the best medium shield is, like, the one that you get right at the start of the game, and it's also the worst looking of them. Um, that that really bugs me, personally. Um, because, frankly, like, if this... If the the blue gold shield... Oh, so here we are. We're putting on the the Crimson Burst and the Opaline. So, this, so when we take our Physic Flask, it will then give us some pretty substantial health regeneration and also a bubble shield that will tank one hit. So it's very, very good defensively. But um, yeah, in terms of the shield that we have, it has really, really great stability and honestly, like, some of the better defenses. Um, so it's just, like, it would be more of a, a choice if it had, like, good stability and low defenses, but because it has both, it just outclasses pretty much everything. Now... This room specifically, you want to be quite wary of because these are pages, is what they're called. P-A-I-G-E. And um, they can deal a ton of damage and have like a disproportionate amount of health considering how they look. So you really want to bait one out and take care of that because if you just run in there and you're getting hit off both of them, you're going to have a bad time in that room, particularly at this point in the game, off two pages. Um, oh, it's actually P-A-G-E. There's no I, never mind. But... Um, so yeah, just be aware of that room specifically and uh, bait one at a time because they can deal a ton of damage and have a ton of health. So up this bit of ruin, there is a scarab. We're going to use a slam. I mean, you can't really sneak up on this one from the from the ball side because you have to go up the ruin to get to it. So no matter what, you have to chase it from that one. 
you mentioned fighting the pages. Um, try your best to avoid getting hit by the burst fire crossbow, the poly crossbow that they have, because that does a inordinate amount of damage if it hits. And do you have the list of page drops handy? Oh yeah, yeah, actually that's true. So they can drop the page hood, the page garb, the page trousers, the red branch short bow, and perfumer bolts. Now we picked up our sacred tier, we're going to upgrade our flask again. Uh, there's also um, an, it's it's like a high, it's called a high page, so there's like a, a stronger trained version of the pages, and I think those are the ones that have the burst shot board. I think the normal ones only have the single shot. I think that's the distinction, but I honestly couldn't tell you that from memory. Now down here, um, in what I believe is Witchbane Ruins, you're going to encounter an NPC called Selen. Um, we found another version of her in an earlier part. Now, this Selen you can't really do anything with currently, but if you follow along with Selen's quest, you will eventually get an item that will lead you here. When you come here with that item, you get to finish her quest a lot later on, and it's, again, pretty cool. If you do it Selen's way instead of the alternate way, you get better rewards, so we're going to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. So now, we're heading to another cave and this one is another shitty one it's a poison cave this time there's a couple of these um and there's kind of nothing in this one as well I'm, I'm pretty sure the reward for this one is kind of really quite bad comparatively compared to others yeah um it's it's not great uh the boss is also kind of are terrible um generally speaking if you've got access to fire damage and thankfully we have a torch um if you've got access to fire damage the boss will be easier it's not a difficult fight it just takes an unusually long amount of time now these sort of mushroom priest guys have a couple of drops as well they can drop toxic mushrooms i believe um, yes and uh so generally speaking the only drops that i have on the list are um, ones that drop like their their weapon and armor. So when it comes to those, they don't they don't drop any weapons or armor. So that's kind of the distinction. Um, such as the drats, the drats, the rats don't drop anything that you could like equip. So it's like not really worth mentioning because generally speaking, the stuff that you like the consumables and stuff don't really come up that much. I mean, that being said, rats are actually capable of dropping rune arcs, and they're that basically the only way to farm them, so we'll mention exactly what rune arcs are for when it becomes relevant. Um, but for now, just know that rats are a source of rune arcs if at any point you run short. This is true. This is true. So, we're just, you know, we're just heading through this poison bit, getting another arteria leaf. Yippee! I, I, just God, the, the amount of times that you're going to be like, oh, I wonder what this item is, and you're just like, oh, great, it's just a crafting item that I'm not going to use so often. But, and, it, and it's worse because they do just grow out the ground eventually in places as well, so it's like, why, why are they presented as such good items? So we're going to put fire on our weapon before we go into this boss, and the technique is to just hit the boss, I guess. Pfft. Yeah, it's just hit it until it dies. You might get poisoned, but fun fact, the uh, the physic flask that we have gives you a decent amount of health regen per second, and the damage that a poison swamp does, or indeed poison from these enemies, is uh, a, like a fixed rate of damage. It's percentage based, but you can mitigate a lot of it by taking the health regen physic. So you can yeah. completely ignore the threat of poison from pretty much this point forward. Which is actually another reason why that Physic Flask is so good. Because uh, it pretty much means like you have it equipped all the time, and it just mitigates poison. So we've just sped up this bit on the beach, um, because it's, it's, it's picking up like two items. And also, shame on you, Miyazaki, for making me run all the way to the end of this fucking beach. And there is an item, and you're like, wow, this has got to be something good. And it's, uh, it's, it's fucking nothing. A golden rune two, epic. See, see if it was like a golden rune six, it'd be like, oh, that's cool and sexy for this point in the game. But yeah, fuck Miyazaki. 
And we're coming up to a, a reasonably valuable merchant here. Now, this is yes. the one that you mentioned earlier that gives you cheap stone sword keys, which is great. This merchant also has the Zweihander, which is an exceptionally good weapon, um, as well as the Lantern. Now, that Lantern will become our light source in most dark interiors from this point forward. The torch is brighter, but the Lantern you don't have to have equipped, per se. Just yeah. when you use it, it increases the kind of player candle, so you can just see more around you. Um, now, he you also... Sorry, oh, he ahead. also has a Lost Ash of War, which is an item that lets you duplicate an Ash of War. Um, so that's something that's pretty... So if you if you ever need two of the same Ash of War for whatever reason, um, then that is a way of getting it. I'll just uh, say as well that if you don't pick up the Lantern here, the first merchant in the next major area, Leonia, also sells a Lantern. So they really didn't want you to miss that. You know, the devs really wanted you to to have access to that, so there's multiple ways to get it. So, just like in the uh, the dragon ruins in Limgrave, uh, this is also another chest that will teleport you here, uh, well, to here um, when you open it. So this is way, 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 way later in the game, but um, for I don't, it's kind of weird that it even does teleport you here, because you can't actually get anything really from doing this uh you get the blessed dew talisman like you can get it just now rather than later um but ultimately don't bother fighting this guy it's just not worth it um even if he probably will drop a comparatively large amount of souls for this point in the game the amount of health he has is just is just is pointless so yeah just fucking get your ass out of dodge so you can just teleport away Nice and easy. As you can see, he's fucking miles away. And we are just going to head back to the fourth Church of America. And from here, there is a never... An, an, uh, there's an ever jail that we're going to do. Um, this is, a, again, a pretty easy one. Ground Slam makes most of these pretty easy, to be fair. I will say that now, the boss for this one, um, the Ancient Hero of Zamor... Um, it has a lot of frostbite-based damage. Now, to explain a little bit about what frostbite does, is it lowers your defenses, so you actually take more damage while frostbitten. Now, you can mitigate that with a spell that we get later, but more often than not, it's not worth it. It doesn't pop up that often. That's true. You also you take a chunk of damage like bleed when you get frostbite. It's not as much chunk damage as bleed does, but you still take like a chunk when you get frostbitten. Um, as you can see, ground slam putting in the work. Uh, two ground, two direct ground slams will stagger him. Um, if you kind of glancing hit with ground slam, it does do less damage uh, or less poise damage. Well, both it does less damage and less poise damage, to be fair. Um, but if you can get two direct hits in at him, then you know that that's the way to go. Obviously, when, when he uh, when he buffs, he does get significantly harder to hit. But still, nothing that you shouldn't be able to do, you know? Speaking of the buff, actually, um, his little buffing animation, he'll dash away from you a couple of times and then kind of kneel down. Uh, that animation does not have a hitbox, meaning um, you don't take damage if you stand near it while it's doing that. So if you can sort of box it into a corner, it's a great opportunity to get a ton of damage in on it. This is true. Um, in addition to that, it also, a lot of uh, when bosses have a sort of charging animation, it, you think that they're going to do a big explosion afterwards. That's like a classic thing in Souls games. This guy doesn't. So uh, he is, when he looks like he's powering up or charging up, it's actually completely safe to hit him. You don't need to worry. Now, we got the Radagon's Sore Seal off him, and that is something that we will be equipping for a long time. Um, it's a great item that gives you a ton of free stats and the exchange of that is you take a little bit of extra damage, but we find that until late game, that is worth it. So here we are at the Wandering Mausoleum, and I know that you want to mention this, so on you go. So the Wandering Mausoleums, uh, they have a couple of different forms. Um, some of them can even attack you, but you don't get to encounter those until way later. And the objective with these things is to kind of clean these 
little skull growths off of their legs. Um, when you do that, eventually, after you've played enough of them, some rocks will fall down and the mausoleum will sit down. Going inside the mausoleum, you can actually duplicate the kind of boss soul items of this game. So they're called Remembrances, and each of the shard bearers and a couple of other bosses will drop a Remembrance. And it actually allows you to get both of a boss's items, like it, its boss weapon um, and maybe a spell, from the uh, the boss soul um, in the same playthrough on the same character. It's actually a very cool addition to the soul's formula, so to speak. There's the menu for it. And as you saw, when it was sitting down, um, there were a lot of mausoleum soldiers in this area. When you make those sit it down, the mausoleum soldiers will all die. And um, you also get the souls for that as well, which is pretty good. It's a good way of just getting a whole bunch of souls pretty quickly. Um, and also, in, in some areas as well, it's a great way of just clearing the area. So, hitting, like, sometimes it's it, you can just run past them. Other times, it is worth... Uh, make them sit down to clear the enemies. So that's us at 17 mind. That is our current objective. And that is also us for part 4. So we will be seeing you in part 5. Catch you later. And then we have it for another part. Join us in the next one. We're doing the second half of Weeping Peninsula. As well as we're doing Margit, which is the last boss before Stormvale. Now, you can follow us on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming every Saturday once the DLC comes out. And if you're feeling generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you want. But the best thing you can do, the best thing, is just like this video or comment anything. I mean, just comment anything. Just seconds out your day. Come on. Anyway, catch you in part five.